Now, let's go into the configuration of analytics. So, we must connect to our Digiford server that is located within our premises. Once we've done so, we can go through and have a look at exactly what options we can choose from. By default, Digiford has a status configuration which you can actually pinpoint to the T whether your activation or your video content analytics is activated, if it's receiving frames, and if it's current working progress. Let's click on the configuration option here. The configuration will now tell you that it's either searching for an analytics server, it's currently processing, depending on what description you want to choose, and also we can drill down on that and have a look in even more depth exactly what's going on based on that particular configuration of that video content analytics here, we can have a look. Now as you can see, we're currently losing frames, which means that our video content analytics is not working at all. So let's have a look now at how easy it is to configure video analytics. Click on the configuration tab right underneath analytics. We click the add button. So now it's very important that we name our analytics accordingly to what we would like to remember. Because remember one thing, once we say once we make the name, we cannot change it later on. And we'd have to delete the current configurations in order to start all over again. For the purpose of today, I'm going to put in VCA which stands for Video Content Analytics. Now my description is a very, very important one, but guess what? You can change that later on, even if you choose to change or modify that kind of configuration. So for today, we have to select what camera we're going to use. So we're going to use camera 01. We're going to use the exact same media profile. Now it's very important to understand how media profiles work because just like in Digifort software, we can support multiple streams, multiple profiles. So you can record it at a high resolution and view it at a lower resolution. Same rule applies with video content analytics. It's very important that you don't try and process a megapixel resolution image because it's a waste of processing power on your server. The Digifoot servers are only going to process an image at th one SIF. Further down we have the processor. Now do you remember how we configured two servers? There's actually two ser or so we had four servers on our network. Well, my one was Digifoot Analytics Server. So select my server, which is Digifoot Analytics Server, and we have two options to choose from. Let's go through the basic functions first so you can have a better understanding of exactly what I mean. Further down, we have operation schedule. This tells you exactly when you would like to activate or deactivate the analysis of the operation. So, for example, if I don't want my VCA to be operating during the day, I can simply just click on it and deactivate the function. So my video content analytics will only work between the hours of 0, 3 a.m. in the morning, and from 18 to 23.59. Okay, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's select analytics configuration. So, here we go. This is currently outside the front of our office. By having a look at the image, the software is automatically gone and retrieved a video file. So let's right click and create a zone. So there we go. I can simply just use my mouse to, to drag this image or shape. Okay, I can simply just double click and create whatever kind of image I want. Maybe it's an important thing to make it like that for example. So there we go, we do have a bit of a funny image there. That means that we can maneuver our shapes in any way that we wish. Now on the right hand side we select what option we would like this zone to achieve. So for example if I select this object, abandoned object and ticket, anything that's abandoned within the area that I've selected we can trigger an event or an alarm so it can notify an authority. Here, this is the rearm time, so it's going to wait zero seconds before it looks again to make sure that there's nothing else in that frame or anyone else has removed anything. And then it checks here every 20 seconds. Okay, so for example, if there was an item here and I've removed that item and the item's gone and it's been evident that it's been gone for 20 seconds, then it will trigger off an alarm. Now, what kind of trigger alarm can you do? Let's have a look. Look at that. Just like the Digifort software, we can function any of these events. So we can email, SMS, pop up a screen, sound an alarm, instant message to the operator, request written confirmation, activate presets. The functionality is endless. If we wish, we can also do removed object. 
Sorry, I do apologize about that. I actually got confused with the uh, the zones. Abandon object being an object le being left there greater than 20 seconds. And removed object, obviously an object that's been removed from the scene. So here we are. Rearm time, 0 seconds. And once again, the rule says 20 seconds. You're probably asking, can we change it and maybe make it less? Because what point is it if we remove the object and 20 seconds later it triggers? So let's put in 10 seconds there. That's perfect. So now, if anybody decides to remove any object or bag or any type of item within that vicinity, within 10 seconds, it will automatically trigger. I have to press the Save button, which is the option OK. Advanced, which is face detection. But in order to do face detection, I strongly recommend that you use it in a door or a corridor area where the main focus of it is just a corridor and someone walking through or walking through the front door. This has nothing to do with facial recognition and I really hope that you don't get confused between the two. Digifort does not yet support facial recognition, but we do support face detection.